Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another lesson of the Focus on Storyblock course. I am Marcelo Lewin, the Headless Creator, and as always, you can get a hold of me right there, Marcelo at headlesscreator.com. I'll return your email as soon as I can, send me questions, feedback, whatever you like. Today, uh, we're going to talk about how to create a simple Storyblock plugin. Uh, to help extend uh, the, the functionality of Storyblock. And the person that's going to help explain that is Lucas Brand. He's the founder of uh, Vertex Media uh, Technologies. He's also a solutions architect, a Storyblock ambassador, and a Nuxt advocate. Now, we're going we're gonna to have a chance to talk to him in just a minute. But as you all know how this works, as always, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show my screen and uh, go sign up. Get a free account. It's free. You, you don't have to pay anything for it, but you literally will have access to hundreds of lessons, not just on uh, Storybug, and we're, we're going to bring in a whole bunch of lessons uh, for Storybug, but you also you'll have access to uh, the, let me show you right here, Content Modeling Weekly, because every headless CMS requires content modeling, and that's the beginning of any project. So you got to make sure you do it right. The Content Modeling Weekly course has tons of lessons. In fact, I think I have now 74 lessons, um, over 1,321 uh, minutes of video that you can watch, including uh, the content models that I create in Miro, which you can, we, which you will have access to. It's 100% free. There's a whole bunch of other courses that you can check out, um, and including the Discover Headless Tech, which will, well, obviously you can use it to discover more headless technology. So again, if you register, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to hit 1,000 registered users, and today I hit 600. Woohoo! So I'm almost there. I'm almost on, on the way there. So anyway, that's it for the marketing. I'm not going to tell you anymore, except please register. Go there now if you can. That's it for, for uh, the marketing part. What I will do now is, as you know, for the on-demand version, I restart the intro because there's no marketing whatsoever, um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and restart the intro, and I will see you in just 15 seconds. Well, welcome, welcome to another lesson of the Focus on Storyblock course. I am Marcelo Lewin, the Headless Creator. As always, there it is, marcelo at headlesscreator.com. Send me an email with feedback, questions, whatever you like. If it's a question for our presenter today, I'll pass it on to him and he will get back to you. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Storyblock and plugins. How do you extend the functionality and how do you create one? Uh, and the person to do that is Lucas Brand. Now, I could tell you all about him. Well, why am I going to do that? I'm just going to let him do that. So let me bring on Lucas. Lucas, welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you here. Now, um, what I love about this course and, this, and the internet today is that I have people from all over the world. I'm in Southern California. You are in Vienna, correct? Yeah. Okay. So it's about, what, nine-hour difference over there? Yeah, it's uh, around uh, 4.30 p.m. So getting close to beer time. <laughs> close. close. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're the founder of Vertex Media, so tell us about that. And how did you get into development and everything that you're doing today? <laughs> yeah, gladly. Um, actually, it sums up quite quickly. Um, I'm probably like around 13 plus years now in web development. Um, mostly full stack. Um, yeah, at a certain point, I just decided to um, create my own company, which led to two companies I currently have, which is one for like an Austrian real estate uh, search platform, and the other one where I concentrate mostly on headless technologies, for example, Storyblock. I see. So um, what got you into development? Why did you jump into that? What attracted Good question, you? question, actually. It's like uh, probably it started early with my dad because he was always like um, interested in a lot of uh, new technologies. And well, that meant a lot of different things than it means now, actually, like back in the day. But sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm so glad, glad you said that. that. That's how I got my kids into technology because I've always been interested in technology. And I started back in the 80s, right? When 
I had a Commodore VIC-20, so it's got nothing to do with what we have today. <laughs> but it makes you appreciate what you have today, right? Uh, knowing where we came from only, what, 40 years ago, knowing where we came yeah. from, it's just amazing. Yeah. So what attracted you to headless technologies? I mean, I know what attracted me, but what attracted you to headless technologies? Well, actually, uh, I think it's the future of, of uh, like technologies in general, of web technologies, uh, mostly like for content management, for sure. Mm -hmm. because um we kind of get rid of all of the monolithic systems right. like uh, yeah i mean i don't have to uh, call any names there but <laughs> we all know that uh they bring the disadvantages with them and yeah technologies like storyblock uh try to solve that and actually i think they do a really good job with that yeah definitely Definitely. Okay, cool. Um, last question. I always like to do a little bit of personal stuff. And I'm going to ask, um, I'm a movie buff, as everybody knows. <laughs> I have, you know, as you can see back there. Uh, every night I'm watching something over there. Uh, what's your favorite movie or TV show, if you prefer TV show? Uh, favorite movie would be some old one as well, I guess. I guess it's Dune by uh, David Lynch. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Very yeah, good. It was a good adaption, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, sounds good. So I'm going to go ahead and show your screen. Okay. So let me go ahead and add it there. Uh, perfect. We can see your screen. So, uh, Lucas, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on mute. If anybody has any questions, please type them in the chat. I will ask Lucas. Lucas, you know, I'll have some questions, so I'll jump in. But uh, it's all yours now. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, questions whenever you feel for it, uh, feel free to ask them because that's what it is for. Right? Um, yeah, so what will I show you today? Um, how to create like really simple story block plugins and how to extend the functionality that is out of the box there. Um, what we're going to build is actually this, which is a really simple uh, SEO metadata um, plugin with just a title and description field and some uh, snippet preview. So, and how are we going to do that? Um, actually, it will be quite simple, but it would probably be a good idea to give you some like overview about uh, how data in general is stored in Storyblock and what the whole architecture about it is, because um, Storyblock itself, they uh, created one of these, like our marketing uh, overviews for that. And they actually in essentially or uh, all over encompassing, they have really good documentation on a lot of stuff. Um, but this picture actually gives a good overview. Um, Storyblock itself has like spaces, which you can imagine they are like specific websites or specific web projects. So one space, one project. Um, in there, you can create uh, content objects, which are called stories. And these content objects uh, can be two different types. Actually, they can be like content types. And content types can have nested components inside as well. So content types itself and nested components um, are both components in general and can be created in Storyblock. Uh, but the difference is that content types are more like pages, articles, or like blog posts. Um, but it's not limited to that. Of course, you can use them for whatever purpose you have in mind. But in general, the only difference is that um, these content types are listed as stories, whereas the nested components inside can be anything from, you know, uh, images or like, um, yeah, rich text, uh, edit the content or stuff like that. Uh, 